We have another round of Nami gameplay from locals today. I'm up against Sakazuki. The things I'm really looking for, honestly, at the top end are stuff like Borsalino tucking away my Zephs. And then also cards like Rebecca that get out Hina's and just kind of fill out the board a lot more than should be for that amount of Dawn. So when there's too many threats on board, that's where things become a problem. But you'll kind of see that we open up with a couple of Nojikos. So with a little bit of bouncing and late game recursion of Kaya's, I think we can get there. Enjoy. The Sakasuki matchup is actually a really interesting one, I find. I, I think Nami actually has a decent amount of game against this deck, which is kind of nice, right? Like, if this is going to be the tier, like, 1.5, tier 0 deck of the format, it's nice to actually have that game, have that answer. Now, opponent just goes, you know, one Dawn, activate leader effect, and passes, which is great. I'm just going to draw a card. Going second is always nice against Nami. When you have that choice, you kind of start off with one less uh, card off your deck. Now, opponent, before playing anything, swings five at lead i'm gonna play the rubber band mill over one the impel down which is kind of nice but obviously love those as triggers they play three costs luffy pass the turn from there well activate leader effect you know kind of doing that every turn but regardless for dawn on my side i draw a card i'm gonna play the nojiko bounce the uh three cost luffy and and this is kind of what you want to do with early game um nojiko so obviously if it's like a searcher or something you're not really looking to bounce that type of stuff just to give them like recursive value uh but really any type of threat you're trying to put it back now uh 7k is being swung at um at the uh, kind of lead here i'm gonna pitch my second nojiko mill over two more cards up to 9k for the nami they play the three cost luffy again which is kind of exactly what i wanted to see i was hoping something else would come down or honestly i might have actually just pitched the death wing Honestly, because the Nojiko would just get so much value again. Regardless, I draw a card, I peel off here, draw two more, find myself a Mr. One and a Love Love, which actually is pretty good here. If they start swinging in at a decent amount, it would be pretty good. But regardless, it's not like a gavel, so I'm not like completely pressed for value here. And uh, usually what I would do here is maybe just Nojiko hold up like a one cost um effect here and then we're it, we're in a pretty good spot we bounce the luffy but regardless that's not happening they untap with uh kind of a, an amount of dawn that it starts becoming concerning right they're gonna start developing their board i'm gonna pitch the kaya to the 6k attack at lead they're gonna swing 7k at lead i'm gonna love lamental draw one because when i play it i'm at three or less and uh, we're in a relatively good spot i think still right like we're not being pressured super hard and I'm gonna say this in every single video until everyone gets it, but usually if I'm like 30 or more cards in life, I, I or 30 more cards in deck, I like to be at five, right? And, and sometimes I'll play aggressively just to keep that way. Anyway, find myself a peel off, draw two more cards. I find a lot of one cost events and uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good that way. So my opponent is gonna go to their side and at this point, before I even pass that way, I'm going to uh, kind of attack out here and uh, try and hit the Luffy, but regardless, the Borsalino blocks. And on their turn, they're going to activate leader ability, really filtering to find the top end of their deck, realizing that really the, these uh, 5k attackers aren't really going to get there in the long run. Now they're going to swing 7k, which is a good number to swing. I'm going to spot a rearrange the top three. I find the peel off, which is actually really nice. And the uh, breakfast is actually a really good consideration as well. I don't necessarily want the uh, Mr. One as well. So really just trying to think how I want to draw it. So uh, regardless here, I'm going to rubber band. I'm going to drop the Mr. One and then I can you know, hopefully just go off with the peel off next turn. 7k when Borsalino comes in as well. I'm going to uh, rearrange the top three again. Now I find a gavel, which actually can be really interesting. Do I want to draw that instead? I mean, probably not. I want the peel off, but regardless, do I want to just send it to the bottom? Not with a peel off really like even if the next two cards are bad, peel off just getting you through is important. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to pitch the Mr. One that I already have in hand. And uh, at that point, 7K comes in. I'm going to uh, lose the gavel and then I'm going to take the hit. So really what I did here was mill over the card, but still take the hit. An important niche scenario that you want to take advantage of when you're playing Nami. I have peel off to draw two cards, but it's important that sometimes you do want to take the hit for a trigger, but you also want to take the effect of the card. This is something that you notably can't do on the sim, really. So anyway, I'm thinking about who to attack. Nami's going to attack the uh, kind of 5k Luffy here, and, and I'm just really trying to get cards out of their hand, right? Because they're filtering through, and I'm going to try and remove the options. I'm going to play Mr. One, grab a gavel, and really start protecting against some bigger threats that they might have right notably i'm going to breakfast 
and uh, kind of just look at some cards, see what things do, right? Like, I'm, I'm still learning this game in a wide front here, so I'm going to bounce that to their hand. It came in top, so why not? And then now I'm just dealing with kind of Borso Blocker and still a 3-5 with Leader. Regardless, though, we're getting to those big Dawn stages where stuff like Borsalino can come down, but Rob Lucci comes down, takes out my two characters, and uh, this is where I'm happy to at least see a couple of Deathwings. I think that's going to be really important here. I'm going to have to pitch a Deathwing. You'll notice my hand is Gavel to Deathwings, so it's going to have to be that, right? So Gavel, pitch a Deathwing, and then mill over two cards, a Kaya and a Spada, and then now the next swing with the Deathwing, I'm going to be able to draw two cards. So it's not optimal, but we're we're moving through our deck right now. We're going to take the hit here, the love, love. And you'll notice I pause on stuff like this to keep things uniform, right? It's all about the mind games that you play with your opponent. Ultimately, there is no trigger. I know that. But you have to keep this consistent to reduce the amount of information that your opponent is potentially getting. You don't want to immediately start putting stuff like that in your hand where they're thinking, oh, they got a character. Oh, they got a mellow or whatever it is. Pause. Keep your things consistent. And uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing. Uh, I, I believe it was AK if I count that up right. I'm going to swing that at the uh, at the Luffy itself. So at that point, going to force a lot, a lot, a lot of counters, a lot of cards out of their hand. Bounce the Borsalino after so they don't pitch it to that. And then uh, kind of pass the turn from there. So still getting a lot of value, right? Like taking resources out of your opponent's hand is very valuable. And just taking the amount of card selection that they can potentially take advantage of with leader effect is also very important. Regardless, though, I have Gavel Pitch Impel into a Mellow, which is a pretty good stance here. And then potentially I have one Dawn left for like a 1K event if I happen to draw it off the Mellow. Regardless, opponent is thinking, what do they do? Nami is kind of wide open here, but if you start noticing like how the deck and the uh, graveyard is looking, it's kind of even. They use leader effect, trying to think about where they can pressure me from, but I am less than 25 cards left in deck still three life which is a great spot obviously the optimal spot is five or four life but this is still meeting my marker if i'm 20 i want to be at like three to four like 20 plus cards in library i want to be at three to four and then 10 plus i want to be somewhere in the range of one to three ideally two to three three is ideal two is kind of where i'm comfortable at one is kind of eh, but i can take a hit or two Regardless, though, those are the metrics that I'm thinking of. Now, they're going to go Rebecca, and I'm thinking, oh, no, this is a play where they're going to go Rebecca and Hina. So they're going to start filling their board a little too wide. But regardless, it's Rebecca into a three cost, which is kind of still the same functionally frustrating thing. Board going wide. And I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of on the backseat here. I have to understand, like, when to take a hit and when to, like, kind of block out optimally. 7K swings at lead. And at this point, I'm going to go mellow to draw a card just to see the resources I have, the options I have, draw where you can, then make your gavel swing. 7k swings, I'm going to go gavel pitch the impel down, and then uh, mill over two cards. I lose my rush Usopp, which is kind of frustrating. That could be a nice little net card. Now, I find a peel off, I'm going to trigger both of that, and uh, that, that's a really good trigger to be getting late game here. Opponent passes from there. And at this point, untapping with 10 Dawn, I count the fact that I have a pretty good amount of cards left. I believe it's about 13, maybe I'm miscounting there. But regardless, I am almost in that end game situation, going for the win situation. I'm going to get back a gavel with the Mr. One, just so I have some cards to pitch away. And I'm thinking, do I go for some attacks? Do I kind of use up my Dawn here? Or am I going to be able to kind of save some of that for maybe the life hits I'm going to take? Now, 5K is going to swing at the three, uh, three cost 4K and... I'm hoping that they counter some of this out. I'm hoping that they spend some Dawn and they do, which is nice. And at this point, I'm going to let them untap. They can go to their turn and keep going. I have myself a Deathwing. I can redraw with a Love Love Mellow and then pitch the card that I draw with the, uh, with the Mellow to the Gavel itself. And then the Deathwing can draw me some fresh cards. So I can go through like literally almost five cards this turn. So up to 9k, I find it myself a Zeph. They're going to sing 7k at lead. I'm going to gavel pitch the Zef. And so that gets me to another two cards, three cards gone this turn so far. And then Deathwing is going to draw me two. Essentially, I've gone through five cards just off of swing. That, that is a really, really, really powerful turn in terms of the amount of cards that I'm able to go through here. But we'll wait to see where we end up spending the Deathwing. And now our opponent is thinking, like, how much do they swing? How much do they commit to this? Like, they're thinking, do I have the Deathwing? Do I have a one cost event? And... I'm not taking any hits here. The Deathwing is coming. You got to swing all your Dawn 
at your uh, at your characters to really make any swing happen. Now, Luchi is a pretty good swing if you attach uh, some amount of K to it, right? Because this forces a 9K counter if I have it. Luchi swings uh, 8K at me, and then I Deathwing. I draw two Zephs, Ooh, and then I trigger into a third Zeph. I'm telling you, mentally, I'm screaming. I'm screaming. It's not fun. It's not fun right now. Regardless, I'm going to try and go for this one. So, Kaya, draw two cards. Then I have three Zephs. I'm going to pitch two of the Zephs that I just drew. Put those away. I still have one Zeph to bounce with. Now I breakfast and then play the Kai. I tap the Dawn there. So this is where I start like shortcutting and my opponent wants me to slow down, which is completely fair. This is a fair request. So just making sure I tap the amount of Dawn right. Pay the uh, kind of one and a half for the Kaya. I have three cards left. I'm really thinking like, how do I get rid of three cards? And then I completely forgot that Zeph actually just mills cards over. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then I and then I kind of realize I'm like, oh, <laughs> I Zeph kind of a mill over two cards bounce the Kaya, use my last Dawn to play the Kaya to win the game. And that's essentially GG. I'm just explaining to my opponent because I'm going a little too fast, I'm excited, but regardless, that's the Sakazuki matchup. And that's how the cookie crumbles, GG's.